I am the designated worry ward. I do need to say that uh, I'm worried about uh, what, um, what will happen with health reform, or if anything will happen, uh, and uh, what its consequences will be. I'll try very hard here to be a bipartisan insulter uh, in terms of uh, talking about the things that I worry about. I worry about them, whether they're done by Republicans or Democrats. I am in, very much in favor of the uh, overall structure of Obamacare, of uh, subsidies that are generous to low-income people for generous insurance coverage. As income rise, your subsidy goes down and the minimum required coverage that you have to buy goes down, and I'm in favor of that too. The two things that I uh, worry about uh, that I did want to mention uh, are, uh, first, uh, evidence that medical care actually improves people's health and even more than that evidence that providing people with health insurance leads to the consumption of additional medical care that improves people's health. One of the things I hope you remember if you took a statistics course here at Penn is correlation is not causation. And the alternative way to establish causation, everybody knows I think, is randomized controlled trial. We have had a randomized controlled trial of uh, health insurance uh, in the state of Oregon because the state pre-ACA didn't have enough money to cover all able-bodied poor adults who eventually were covered by the ACA. They used a r random lottery to assign people to coverage or to remain where they were with no coverage and then they compared the outcomes. Uh, the outcomes were, uh, roughly speaking, they spent more money when they were insured, 30 percent more, uh, they were uh, much less likely to have big medical bills when they were insured by Medicaid, uh, but health outcomes were barely affected. Certainly mortality was not affected. The only health outcome that was really affected was um, depression, and that may have been because they no longer had to worry about high medical bills. So, uh, so that was very disappointing to me. I was actually crushed because if any population should have been, had their health improved by health insurance, they should have been this population. Um, I am the immediate past president of the Association of Health Economists. I've lost my, uh, my Secret Service detail now, uh, <laughs> but uh, I did give a lecture in which I uh, pleaded with fellow health economists, especially younger ones, uh, but not just health economists, epidemiologists and others. We need to develop bulletproof evidence that health insurance really does improve people's health because without that evidence, the stability of things like uh, Obamacare or even subsidies to health insurance in general for low-income people I think is in serious jeopardy. A reasonable person could ask if all health insurance does is protect your wealth, not your health, then she would be so much in favor of it. I believe it's true, but the uh, science of measuring the health outcomes and the relating them to the use of medical care is mm -hmm. very much in its infancy and very crude, and we really do, uh, I think, seriously need uh, much better evidence, not only to solve this question of public policy, but because we are trying to use it in the small, in insurance programs to reward physicians who produce better health, health outcomes and nurses and uh, punish those who don't, uh, but we need a defensible measure. I think in the future, you'll hear a lot more, and uh, so much more is needed to be done. Uh, about uh, measurement of health and how it's connected to the consumption of medical care and how that's connected to health insurance. Partly it may be a function of health insurance design, which could be rejiggered. We all have our ideas of how to have, be much more effective in terms of improving health. My second worry is um, cost containment. Uh, of course, I'm an economist, uh, although I will tell you um, uh, I don't lay awake nights worrying about 17% of GDP. The question is not the fraction of GDP, it's if there's waste in health care, that's the issue. Uh, but, uh, that's, a, that's a topic for a question I hope somebody will ask about why the fraction of GDP is the world's most pernicious measure of a country's efficiency of its health care system. But the point I want to make here is to say uh, there is very little private sector cost containment in the Affordable Care Act or in the Republican alternative. But the one thing there was that cheered the hearts of health economists was the Cadillac tax, a very <laughs> clunky way of limiting uh, a big tax break that's offered to high-income people like me. Some of my friends say you should send a Christmas card to the Treasury uh, thanking them for it. it, but it's not so much that it seems to me embarrassing, if not unjust, it's that it prompts me to do what I just said I did, take the top-of-the-line health plan 
and not the uh, high deductible health plan, which is also offered here at Penn, which we know works for cost containment, although it also has other potentially undesirable side effects. But here at Leonard Davis Institute, we don't believe you get something for nothing. If you want to contain health care spending, you may have to actually give up something. I worry that uh, uh, without um, attacking what I think is the best way uh, to start to contain health care costs, take my tax subsidy, please, mm -hmm. as uh, Rodney Dangerfield would have said. Uh, 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 then we're never going to really get anywhere with controlling health care spending or alternatively we move, may move to such draconian measures that we'll wish we hadn't controlled health care spending. <laughs>